So, all right, let's go ahead and get right into it. My name is Tim Langford. I've been with Pitsco 21 years now and have been going to the National Skills event for the last, uh, gosh, several years, obviously. Um, um, the last live event and then also was involved with uh, the remote events and then several years prior to that going to the live events. So I've uh, been part of the, the planning team for the USAR, Urban Search and Rescue, and am excited about some of the changes that we're going to get to talk about today. So, yes. I'm Steph Forbes. I am the uh, Coding and Robotics Channel Manager for Pitsco Education. I'm also the USAR Technical Chair uh, for, for, the, for the event. Um, we are really excited to be here with you today and to share kind of some of the updates that we've we presented. We're really excited for what the students are going to be engaging with this year. Um, we've hoped we've listened and, and heard um, from the teams and uh, coaches, advisors, tech chairs, um, and, and made some of the adjustments uh, and updates and added some new things that we think will make the event really exciting this year. Um, so one of the first things, um, if everyone could could go to um, www.pitsco.com. Yeah, and when you get there, if you want to do a quick search for Urban Search and Rescue in the product page and then choose one of those kits and at the bottom of uh, the product page for one of those kits, you will see a link for this Urban Search and Rescue uh, Challenge Guide. And we encourage you and welcome you to download that now so that you have it as we go through the webinar and you'll be able to, um, if there's any questions about any of the, the, the um, information that we give you today, uh, you're welcome to look through that guide and uh, follow along and, uh, yeah. and uh, keep that as a, as a reference for you as we go. So one of the things that we, we want to talk about to you is why we made these changes. Uh, obviously, um, in the past, there's been uh, a lot of effort and work put in by the kids every year uh, for, for these events. And ultimately, when they get to the national event, uh, we felt like, um, and I'm sure they felt like, too, that there wasn't a lot of time for them really to showcase all the hard work they did. They didn't get a chance to run the robots as much as they did, so as much as they would like to have. So what we really wanted to do was to create a scenario or situation where they could showcase more of their work. Um, they could actually run their robot uh, through multiple events, have more time to demonstrate all of the, the, the effort that they put in over the years. So uh, that was one of the main reasons that we made the changes that we made. Um, there are uh, five new skill challenges that we will go over here in a minute that we've added to, and those are separate from the main field event. So if you've been to a previous event, national event, you'll know at the end of the, the, uh, the week, there was a, a, a main field and they had six minutes to go out and find two ordinances and properly dispose this in this large field. Well, now we've added five separate events that will go on earlier in the week. We'll still have the culminating event at the end of the week that is in the same basic format. But prior to that, they will have five uh, uh, chances to show off specific skill sets in each of the areas that we felt um, were kind of prominent in what they do as far as in the main field. But all of the skills are skills that they would need to demonstrate as part of the main portion. Exactly, exactly. So this is just kind of like subsets, again, that they will be able to, in a very focused manner and timed, um, implement. and other things that we, we wanted to go ahead and re-implement, there was a, a real desire to uh, showcase how fast they could do things, you know, and, but we felt like in the main event in the past, that was really impacted a lot by luck. And we felt like that could, not necessarily be fair for some really good teams for one team to be lucky and have a really good bonus score and another team to just through no uh, uh, fault of their own have bad luck and then have an ex uh, extended time. So with these skill challenges, because they are so targeted and everyone is going to be doing the exact same thing, we can felt like we could safely implement a timed mm -hmm. format so that every team will have a chance for bonus points as far as how uh, proficient they are in each of the skill areas. So uh, we'll cover that more. Um, 
There are some event changes that we're, are, this is going to entail uh, because of the, the additional uh, hands-on time with the robots. Mm -hmm. That's going to condense the time uh, that we have to get everything else in, in place. So we had to kind of rearrange our schedule a little bit. We want to go over that with you and uh, hopefully um, talk about just some of the general changes and improvements. Yeah, and really making sure that the kids aren't sitting around um, as much as they have been in the past, but they're up, they're engaging, they're working, they're demonstrating their proficiencies and their skills. Um, and so in addition to the traditional notebook, interview and test, also demonstrating skills physically with the robot. Yeah, if you want to think about this kind of like a uh, figure skating is the way I, I always look at it. There's usually the, the, the freestyle figure skating that they have that, that would correlate to our main field challenge. But these are going to be like the compulsory events. These are those scripted kind of skills that will be separate from that main event. Uh, again, we'll give them a chance to showcase their skills. Yeah. So, so that, uh, that's kind of the flow of uh, what the session will be about today. So before we get into some of those things, we want to make sure we we cover some of the updated rules um, that were implemented this year. There weren't a lot of them, but we do want to make sure that uh, we we cover the ones that are we felt like were uh, the biggest changes. Um, the first one is around the power uh, system. Uh, again, in the past, because of the different vendors having different uh, battery requirements and things like that, we felt like a, a real need to clarify the battery situation. So the rule has been changed to the maximum voltage should not exceed manufacturing specs of 12.8. In other words, if the, the system that you use, if, the, if their main battery is 12.8 or lower uh, as manufacturing specs, that would be a, a legal battery. Um, other storage devices, in other words, if you have a your, your uh, battery pack from the, the vendor or the maker of your robot that is under 12.8, but then you also have a separate bank of capacitors that would charge as a supplementary battery assist, uh, a battery source or power source that would not be allowed. So again, only one battery for the drive uh, mechanical functions of the robot, and it cannot exceed manufacturing specs of 12.8. So team, we've uh, shifted kind of the uh, requirements around eye protection. Obviously, safety is always of the utmost important to us. Um, team members will be required to wear the proper safety um, eye protection um, when they're in the pit areas and when they're working on their robot. Eye protection is not required while they are competing. So while they're in the pit areas, when they're at their tables, when they're working with the tools, um, working with mechanical devices, they will be required to wear eye protection um, when they are actually competing or when they are sitting in the area watching the competitions happen, they will not be required to wear eye protection. They're taking a test. Um, that's not that's not uh, nope. considered working on the robot, nope. so they would not have to wear eye protection. Uh, if they're right. eating lunch. Yep. Nope. Those type of things, uh, we just felt like it made sense to go ahead and relax that rule just a little bit or clarify it to the point where when safety glasses are needed, we want you to wear them, but when they're not mm -hmm. needed, we don't think it's necessary. Yes. So just when they have those, the tools out, when they're working with things, making modifications, uh, adjusting the, the tightness of the screw on the robot, anything of that nature, they will be required when they're in the pit area, um, but outside of that, they will not be required for protection. In the past, there's been some confusion about um, uh, official team members. We understand that sometimes something happens and um, a team member, for whatever reason, might not be able to make the event. We will not penalize the remaining team member. They can go ahead and compete, but we will have to implement a 30-point penalty one time to the overall score uh, just uh, to make sure that it's fair to everyone else that they're competing as a team. So. Those are really the only updated rules that we have, but we do want to go ahead also and take some time to clarify some of the rules that seems like have been in question every year because uh, these are commonly asked questions and, and sometimes at confusion points. So the first one would be uh, concerning motors. Uh, again, because of the different vendors and the way they describe their motors, sometimes there are confusion between uh, what a DC motor would be versus a servo motor. So in order to simplify that, because again, I know, for instance, like a VEX um, system, they don't, they don't designate one motor, one from the other. So we just are counting total motors. So if you have 
eight or less total motors on your um, on your robot in any combination. They could be DC or servo type motors. That would be a legal robot. If you and when you go through inspection, they will ask you to point to them and count them out. If you have nine motors, that would be above the limit. It would not be allowed. So again, eight motors or less in any combination is legal. Uh, one battery operated wireless camera that must be mounted on the robot. A supplemental battery to the power uh, camera can be used, but it cannot exceed nine volts. And then last, uh, again, as far as batteries are concerned, any other battery operated component uh, on the robot would not be allowed unless it uses one of the above power systems. So in other words, if you have a set of lights that are on your robot, they must use either the main a battery uh, that controls mechanical functions or the battery for the camera. What about if my robot has a flashlight that I've affixed to it? If that flashlight has batteries uh, internally to that, that would not be legal. So if you go to Walmart, get one of those little headband battery uh, lights that um, they use to go splunking in a cave and it's got batteries internal to that, those would not be legal unless you've done wiring to take the batteries from them and use the power source from the robot. So if I have a camera and I plug something into it, 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 it will be legal as long as it's using the battery that's in the camera. Exactly. That would be a legal situation. So again, you can have other battery operated components on your robot, but they must use one of the two legal battery sources, either the 12.8 the battery that is part of the main functionality of the robot or the nine volt battery that is part of your battery operated camera system. Okay. So hopefully that clarifies those questions. So now I think we're ready to jump right into the new skill challenges. And again, think of these as the compulsory type events. They will be separate from the main challenge. They will run in the first part of the, the event as far as the, the sequence of the days. Uh, we will try and get all of those through those compulsory events. And then at the end, like we always have, we will have the main event. So if you have downloaded the PDF of the guide uh, from the website, um, if you scroll to the back in the appendix, you will see the information, more information, more detailed information about each of these new skill challenges, as well as a mock-up of an example of what this could look like at the state level um, and how you could build it for a state level event. Now, there are, uh, let's just clarify that a little bit because there is a, a mock-up of what a, a, a main challenge field would be. And then there's also mock-ups for the individual skill challenges. Mm -hmm. They would be separate. So. Uh, unless you want to be uh, at the state level, which you have, this is within your rights, you could go ahead and, and use part of your main field for the challenge. You would probably have to adjust your rubric uh, because our rubrics that we have listed in the back of the guide are based on the idea of these skill challenges being separate events mm -hmm. with their own, um, their own basic field. Mm -hmm. So let's jump right in. Um, the first one. It again is a targeted to um, the arm mechanism and how it's designed for uh, the, the robot um, that they built. Um, this would be basically around how effectively they can open up mailboxes and remove the ordinance. There will be three mailboxes in a row right next to each other on the same board. So the board will be taped to the floor so it cannot move. The robot will have to uh, approach and address the, each mailbox in order. And they will have to open the door on the, on the uh, mailbox and remove the ordinance um, and from the mailbox and set it to the floor just to the to one side or the other of that particular mailbox. Each mailbox will be a little bit progressively harder. So in other words, the first one is the easiest one. Second one is kind of a middle level of difficulty. And so what can you explain just a little bit about what makes each of them a little more difficult? So the first one is at a lower level. Uh, and when you open the door, the ordinance will be kind of at uh, the, the either on the door or right at the edge of the opening. So that would be the easiest one to actually remove the ordinance. The second one or the middle one uh, will be at a little bit higher level. And instead of the ordinance being on the door, it will be set right inside the mailbox. Uh, so they will actually have to reach into the mailbox right at the edge, not very deep, but right at the edge. The third one will be uh, again at that little higher level. Uh, when they open the door, um, the, the ordinance itself is actually deeper in the mailbox, probably deeper than the robot can reach. But at the front of the mailbox, there is a spool of uh, a, a little spool piece of 
on like what thread would go on a spool and it is hanging from the ceiling of the mailbox so they will have to reach in and grab that smaller item uh pull it use it to pull the ordinance out far enough in from the into the edge of the mailbox so that they can then reach the ordinance and gotcha. pull it out so again and um, the opportunity for them to uh, demonstrate how proficient they are at opening those mailboxes and removing the ordinance and sending them to the side. It will be timed. Mm -hmm. uh, so they will have a starting point. The, the um, judge will say go. They will address the, the mailboxes. And then when they're done um, and return to the starting point, the time will stop. And then obviously there will be a um, optimal time and if they get under that then they will get time bonus uh, skip bonus points for that so it's really about them demonstrating how well they can control their arm the arm mechanism that they design. exactly and how well that works uh addressing those uh, that ordinance the next one is a navigation skill challenge again this is about driving and uh, how well they can uh, drive their robot around the course um the, by the way the um and several of these, the driver and spotter will actually have full view of the challenge. In other words, they won't have to use camera view. They will be able to stand within uh, actually a fairly close visual distance from the challenge. So they will actually be uh, from an outside view, be able to watch their robot and be able to perform these. But the navig navigation skill challenge will be they will enter the main field or a simulation thereof. They will pick up an ordinance and they will have to drive to each corner of that field, four corners. Uh, in each corner, there will be a target. They will have to drive over the target, lower the arm with the ordinance, touch the target, and they then are ready to, they have completed that target. They're ready to go to the next corner. Um, they can choose to complete those corners in any order that they want. There will be, if you go directly from ordinate or from corner to corner, there probably will be some obstacles. They will have to kind of uh, weave through. Um, they will not be able to drive straight from one corner to the next. Uh, but the idea, again, is to uh, observe and um, let them demonstrate their control of the robot driving around the field and they, uh, maintaining uh, good control of the ordinance. Um, through the whole process and demonstrating that control when they stop and touch the targets. Time again will start when the judge says go and then stop when the robot exits the field at that same same entry point. The, the next one will be the drive chassis uh, skill challenge. This is going to determine how well the drive chassis has been engineered. There will be two ramps. Uh, and there will be a debris field. Um, they will have to, uh, from a starting point, address um, those three main obstacles in uh, any order that they want, but they will have to go through all three. So in other words, they might have to cross the debris field, go up one ramp, down the other ramp, back to the starting point. That would be considered, um, and there's a, there's a little transition plate between the ramps. That would be considered uh, traversing all the obstacles. Uh, here's the catch. Uh, again, the ramps are at two different um, uh, degrees of slope. Uh, one of them is fairly easy. Uh, the other one is a little bit tougher and has some um, some um, debris or waffles in it so that it, again, is not a smooth ramp. So again, they'll have to kind of uh, talk between themselves. They will be able to see that obstacle as they complete it, mm -hmm. uh, but they might have to decide strategy wise. Sure which direction it makes to address uh, the three different challenges. But again, starting point will be considered finished when they get back to the uh, starting point. So they would make a decision based off of if they wanted to go up a steeper incline versus coming down a steeper incline, but also the texture of the- The steeper that... ramp is a, has some texture to it. So there'll be uh, some bumps mm -hmm. along that that yeah. they might have to uh, um, navigate again if they if they've got a really well designed chassis uh, there might not be a problem going in either direction gotcha um, but if they they're a little bit left less confident um, then they might decide to go up the smooth ramp uh, with a lower slope and then down the steep ramp so yeah. that'll be uh, something that they need to decide then there's uh, the point of view camera skill challenge. Uh, this is the one time, well, that they will have to use and uh, demonstrate uh, driving remotely. The driver will not be able to see the course. He will have to use uh, the view from the camera. 
Basically, there will be a simulated uh, tunnel or restricted pay uh, space, similar to like HVAC uh, duct work, that he will have to, uh, from a starting point, enter one side and then actually um, go through the tunnel, exit, turn around and come all the way back through. Um, there is something in the rubric, if you've, if you've watched and, and read the rubric where it says um, the highest score, part of that would be um, collecting any mission critical data. And that could, we're not promising that there's gonna be anything in the tunnel, but there might be some obvious signs that might they might have to be observant of. And we will ask them afterwards, did you see any uh, critical data? And if they did, um, they will have to tell us what it is. So in other words, there might be a hint, say bomb in library, or there might be something that says, um, um, you know, a uh, person trapped over here. Yeah, something that, that is basically uh, critical to moving forward in the mission. So uh, that would, that, again, this is kind of testing their observational skills as they use the camera. They will not have a spotter, correct? The spotter will be there, but the, they will have the same view as the as the driver um, this, because it's a very simple enclosed space um, and it's about seeing what the camera sees. Okay. So that's what that skill test is about. Um, then the last one would be a communication and collaboration skill challenge. Again, we know uh, sometimes that uh, there are mechanical uh, equipment failures. Uh, and uh, in life, uh, you have to be prepared for that. So this is a test of how well the driver and spotter communicate to, with each other. So the driver will not be able to see the course. He will not be able to use the camera from the robot. He must face away from the course and through verbal communication from his spotter. He must, um, uh, through that communication, navigate the course. There will be a piece of ordinance that he will have to pick up or attempt to pick up and then dispose of. And again, through uh, directions given for from the spotter. So in other words, the driver or the spotter might say, drive forward until I tell you to stop, turn right, drive forward, turn left, lower the arm. Um, those type of communication skills are, are gonna be important to be prepared to use. So that's the kind of test that will be, again, spotter will see the field, driver will not. And based off of feedback from last year and last year's experience being in Atlanta, um, we know that there was a lot of noise and sometimes communication was challenging. Um, so we will be providing a two-way communication where uh, the spotter and the driver will be able to communicate um, using some type of electronic uh, communication system. Yeah, it's like a walkie-talkie or something so that the, the spotter can, the driver can clearly hear the spotter regardless of yeah, and back hours. and forth. So yeah. the questions can be asked yeah. back and forth. So that will be provided at the competition. So those are the five skill challenges. Again, those will be separate events um, that will occur during the first part of the, the uh, overall event and uh, will be scored separately. The rubrics are in the um, challenge guide that you downloaded. So uh, we encourage you to look those over. The diagrams for the different um, different events showing the, the, the mailboxes laid out, the uh, ramps, um, the, the sizes and things like that, and uh, the tunnel, the HVAC tunnel, which can be made with cardboard boxes. Um, all of that is detailed in the guide. And, uh, but if, we, if you have questions, don't be afraid to do, call and ask. Again, these are skills that they have uh, demonstrated in the past during the main challenge, but this is again, just a chance for them to showcase those targeted skills, mm -hmm. give them more robot driving time. Absolutely. So those are the skill challenges. Along with all of this, yes. and this is an exciting part for us, we are refreshing the main field challenge. So um, if you have been to one of the national events in the past, you knew that it was uh, quite a bit larger than the typical state event as far as the size of the field. Um, the field will be, or it has been, and will still be approximately 30 foot by 40 foot in um, outer diameter or uh, dimensions. There will be three main structures, um, and there has been three main structures in the past. There has been a large plexiglass house that is approximately six foot by seven foot in this, that's been kind of the center focal point, two smaller, satellite structures that are like five foot square each and then um three mailboxes that have <laughs> excuse me been scattered through the field 
Uh, we are adding um, several things that we're excited about. There will be a connection point between each of the structures. Um, one of them, one of the connection points will be essentially the, um, the enclosed tunnel or duct work. Um, and then uh, there will be another surprise um, feature. I'm not gonna tell you what that one is because yeah. I want everybody to be surprised. Okay. But the idea is they will be able to actually enter one of the satellite st structures or actually any of the structures if they want to from the entry point, the doors uh, that they've entered in the past, go up the ramps internally and then travel through all three structures without ever going back down to the floor. So this is a, a new element that we're excited for everyone to see. Um, and we hope that um, that will be incentive for the kids to try a little bit uh, harder to get to the national event because we think it's gonna be uh, really kind of um, fun for them, uh, a different things for them, uh, take from what they've done in the past, um, take a little bit more strategy. Mm -hmm. There will be a, a strategy element in the fact that there will be kind of an, um, an obvious shorter route that might be a little bit more risky as far as what the robot has to do. But um, so in other words, higher risk, um, but higher reward as well, as far as time goes. There will be a low risk option. So if they decide uh, strategically, uh, my robot can't do that, or I don't feel comfortable uh, driving my robot up that ramp, there will be a low risk uh, route that they can take, but it will take longer as far as time wise. Uh, overall, there we do feel like there will be a slight difference in um, the time requirements for everyone in general. So we are going to relax the time limit. I think in the guide, it does uh, mention that the, the main challenge will be a six minute yeah. challenge. We have decided um, just to kind of make sure that this first year is because a lot of this we're trying out, we're gonna bump that up to seven minutes. So each, uh, each team will have seven minutes mm -hmm. to try and, and clear, find and clear two of the obstacles uh, from the main field. Another change that we will are, are going to implement again to kind of encourage and make sure that it's uh, a little bit easier time-wise, we will give you targeted areas of where those ordinances will be. So in the past, they've been randomly hidden anywhere in the field. Um, this time, one of them for sure will always be in the main building, uh, the main plexiglass structure. So you'll know going in where one of the, the ordinances will be guaranteed you know, where you're going to find it um, but it could be in a, several different places within, within that, area. that main structure so it won't be exactly but it will be in a fairly condensed smaller area so that reduces the time that it takes to search that will be known and that will be the same for all teams as they compete um, then the remaining ordinance will be probably hidden in one of uh two other places uh again hopefully reducing the time to search through the, all of uh, the whole 30 by 40 foot field with the addition of going through these extra obstacles. So, but we're excited about it. Uh, we've been doing some active testing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've been able to run a typical robot that we you would have seen as far as design wide drive system type, a treaded robot and a wheel robot through these obstacles. We know they work. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, how well and how fast the kids can do it. So we're excited about that yes. the, in the new challenge field. Yes. All right. So event changes and improvements. So we're going to talk through expectations. Um, what do we expect from the, the participants? We're going to update kind of what we what we envision being the event schedule type, what we'll go through with the team orientation. We're going to talk about lunch. Um, and some changes we've made to that and then what the debrief will look like. Obviously going in, uh, everyone sometimes always has preconceived ideas. Someone is uh, sometimes not always on the same page, but you might perceive mm -hmm. as be expected. Our expectation is mm -hmm. maybe not be the same as what I do. So we thought it kind of be best and good for everybody around to talk through what those expectations, just some simple expectations. So everyone is kind of a little bit better on the, more on the same level as far as coming into the event. We want everyone to have a successful event. Sure. So the first thing. Safety is top priority. Uh, all, all of the participants' safety. So um, that kind of falls into the second one, which is respecting each other and respecting the peers and respecting the judges. Um, so ensuring that when they're in the area that they are not running around or 
um, being rambunctious, so to speak, that if they're running their robot, they're running it in the appropriate space and then in designated areas. Um, the same with working with their robot um, and that they're respecting other people's um, space and, and work as well. The other thing is that we want to really stress for is that uh, we're there to help. Um, we want this to be a successful event for everyone there. Uh, we don't want to see anyone fail. Um, but we can't be mind readers. So we don't know. Uh, if you don't ask questions, we're going to assume that you know what you need to know. We, we, we can't know unless you ask questions. So please, please come prepared that if you don't, if you, if you're not aware of what you need to be doing or you, you have questions about event, please don't be afraid to ask those questions because we're there to help mm -hmm. and we want you to be successful and we need you to tell us if you don't understand or don't, um, if you have a question, absolutely, you have to talk to us. Um, so as Tim mentioned, due to some of the changes that we've made and the skill challenges, it's going to be really important um, for teams to be where they're scheduled to be uh, when they're scheduled to be there. So we, we do plan once we get all of the final results from the states and know which teams are coming, uh, we will put a schedule ahead of time together for each team so that they will know when they're scheduled to do their interview, um, when they're scheduled to be at this this uh, skills challenge, and when they're when they will be up in the um, in the main challenge over the course of the three days, so they will know um, where they're supposed to be around the time they're supposed to be, and it's going to be very critical this year to in order to ensure that we're able to stay on time and ensure that all teams are able to have the experience that the teams are there when they're scheduled to be there. So in other words, we, 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 there will be someone there that is kind of um, the, the ringleader as far as the help um, manage getting a team through that flow. But we do want them to take a little bit of response, mm -hmm. self-responsibility uh, on their own to kind of um, be aware of what the schedule is. We will give those schedules out at the very first, uh, to, uh, the first day that they're there during the orientation so that they have those and they can... Um, pay attention to those during the at the uh, the rest of the event um, but then obviously and these kind of sometimes are uns, um, we take for granted we don't say them but um, they're just as important we want to make sure everyone is aware of them um, be kind um, be courteous and have fun and have fun yep so those are our expectations and we hope that everyone um, mm -hmm. has kind of the same set yep all right, so let's talk about the event schedule because there has been some changes to it from what teams that may have participated in the past will experience this year. So day one, um, the days will run nine to four, which is a little different than previous schedules. Um, so day one, what that will look like is you'll come, students will get checked in, they'll get their space or the participants will get checked in, they'll get their spaces, they'll get set in, we'll do a welcome and introductions, and then we'll go through a very detailed orientation. So we will walk the teams through each challenge and point out each skills challenge. We'll point out the main field challenge. We'll review the day. We'll go over um, the, the schedule so that everything will be very clear of what the, what the day will look like. Um, and then very similar to what we've done in the past, um, they'll turn in their resumes and their engineering notebooks. A couple of things that will switch around here um, is that then they will take the written test and then we're going to give them some time to practice in the main field. There's because there's some new events um, that, that might be a little bit intimidating and not new events, but new obstacles, mm -hmm. uh, field elements they that might not have seen before. They might be a little bit intimidated by that. So we want to give them time to get some some drive time, some seat time behind the robot as they, they go over those new uh, elements. And so they have the confidence and the um, foreknowledge mm -hmm. When they begin to discuss strategy for that main field event later on in the week, they will have an idea of what each one of those uh, new elements is like. Um, the, the, again, the two big changes for this day one, again, plan on a full day. It will be a full day that first day. Plan on bringing your robot. In the yes. past, we have, we have said you really don't need to bring your robot till that second day. That will change. So again, Need to reinforce day one, come prepared for a full day, bring your robot. Yes. So we will go through orientations, collect the resumes and the notebooks, we'll take the test. We're also going to do interviews and presentations that day. So while some of the participants might be scheduled to be out practicing in the field during the day, other teams will be going through 
um, the interviews and presentations. Our goal for, the, for day one is to get resumes and engineering notebooks collected, the written tests taken, all the interviews um, completed, and then the last thing we'll do is robot inspection so that as, as the teams are practicing and going through some things, if they need to make a few modifications, we're going to give them a good portion of that day. And the last thing we'll do is inspect the robots. Right. Day two, um, this is gonna be another full day because we're, uh, first thing obviously we'll review the agenda and make sure everyone is on the same page for our schedules, any announcement need to be made. We will finish up any inspections we didn't get done the day before, uh, maybe because you've been practicing or whatever, we will finish those up day two. Same way with interviews, any presentations, that has to be done um, by the end of day two. Skill challenges, all of the skill challenges must be done by the end of day two. So this will be a very full day. There will be a lot of things going on. There will be a lot of movement. You'll, you're, you might be scheduled for the first skill challenge. Uh, the, the other team might be, uh, next to you might be doing the second field challenge and you will cycle through. We will try and get as many people through all of the skill challenges so everyone has a chance to do all of yes. the skill challenges. So that will be a very full day. Uh, and then the last day, day three, obviously again, that morning review, make sure everyone mm -hmm. is doing what they, uh, where they need to be schedule wise. And then we will begin the, the main uh, challenge field. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully uh, again, because there's new elements, might take a little more time, but uh, we're allowing, that's why we want to get all of that other stuff done the first two days. So that day three, we can, everybody can focus on the new, new, uh, the new challenge, mm -hmm. the bigger field. And then also what's going to be very important for us. Once we get that done on day three, we want to do a debrief. In other words, we want to hear any constructive feedback from you. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, we have time for that. So that'll be on day three. Yep. So main thing is teams need to bring their robots on day one. Yep. And once the robots are in there, the robots are in there. Um, they will have time to practice on day one, make any adjustments that they need. Um, and then robot inspection will be the last thing that we do. And then rolling into day two, we're skill challenge all day, nine to four. That third day competition, the, the main competition uh, will be the primary thing. So. Okay. Team orientation. We we felt like this was important enough, and we have to admit that maybe we didn't focus on this uh, as much as we needed to in the past. So we're trying to make a dedicated change to that. So there will be a detailed, and I'm, I do mean detailed orientation, where we will try and review all of the events uh, and all aspects of that as part of an orientation that very first day. So be prepared for that. If you have questions coming in, bring those questions in. Um, if you're there and you feel like you need to take notes, um, you are welcome to take notes during the team orientation because, again, there will be a lot of information that we will cover. We will cover the event schedule, including breaks, when are the breaks, lunch, um, what's expected and uh, all that during lunch, communication protocol, uh, what, who they're allowed to talk to and when they're allowed to talk mm -hmm. to and all that kind of things. Any other logistics, bathroom breaks, all of those things, we will cover as far as that first event schedule. Um, and then also conduct uh, before, after, and during events. We can't say this enough. We've had trouble with this in the past because of the nature of the cameras and possible interference. We will try to at our absolute best to enforce that cameras are only on during actual field time or specific practice time. Um, those are the only two times we want people to have their cameras on. Um, practice area, we will have a designated practice area. We will have a procedure in place for physical testing of equipment prior to the com competition mm -hmm. itself. So again, that first day, we're gonna try and make sure we get everybody time to practice yeah. on the elements and if they, they want to. They can test their camera, they can test all of the different mechanisms on their robot, take a peek at the new national course as well as the skill challenge they'll have some practice time um, but making sure that that's where they're running the robot right uh, and then we're also we'll cover exactly what is allowed during downtime in other words if you're not taking a test if you're not doing your interview if you're not doing robot inspection or if you're not taking your skill test what are they allowed to do at the right. desk and we'll go over that so that everybody's comfortable with that uh, and then there will be a detailed introduction to all of the skill challenges. And when I mean detail, I mean, it will take them and we might have to get everybody up and gather around this skill mm -hmm. challenge 
we will talk them through exactly what will be expected and required for that specific challenge. We will go through all five challenges mm -hmm. that way. Um, we will introduce the main field elements, um, the new ones again. We will, we might even, I might get Steph to drive our <laughs> robot through the main field so they see exactly how those field elements work. But that will be to that point. We will actually show what is expected, <laughs> expected, what they can do, what they can't do as far as legal um, behavior on the main field challenge. Any reviews, uh, uh, rules, mm -hmm. uh, we'll make sure everybody is comfortable with all uh, updated rules. So an example is due to the changes that we're making in lunch that we'll talk about, there's some ramifications if you aren't back on time. So yeah. any of those type of updates we'll cover in the orientation. So uh, as part of that, again, uh, we don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to be prepared to ask questions. So there will be time to make sure that we uh, answer any questions you have about the event and the, the three days, what's going to happen when and all that kind of stuff. That will be part of the team orientation. All right, so let's talk about lunch. So lunch will still be provided. However, um, we listen to feedback um, and based off of uh, some of the experience from last year, there will be a designated lunch break where teams will be able, participants will be able to leave the area and go and have lunch, but they will have to be back by a specific time and you cannot go and get lunch and bring it back into the competition area. Um, they will need to eat it outside uh, of, the, of the area so that we make sure that we keep everything clean and neat. Um, for those that want to have the lunch that's going to be provided and have some dietary restrictions or special requ requests, we will ask for those ahead of time. And Skills does a really nice job of ensuring that they have alternate uh, uh, options for any type of dietary restriction. So in other words, we don't want you to go out to Ruth Chris or what's, what's the big steakhouse? Yeah, that, yeah the, the big fancy steakhouse and bring a steak back and eat in front of the rest of the competitors. <laughs> so, but we do want to make sure that we allow those uh, folks that do feel like they need to leave. You are, will be allowed to leave. We will tell you exactly when you have to be back by and um, you'll have to assume the responsibility on your own knowing ahead of time when um, that you will be able to be back and what your requirement is. If you are not going to be back on time, there will be a penalty. Um, this is part of the, the, the assuming the responsibility that always comes, you know, there's a two, two way street here um, with this uh, ability to leave. There's some um, responsibility ramifications if you can't make it back on time, because again, we've got a lot of things to do and a very limited time to do it in. So, if you are late um, and uh, 10 minutes or fewer, um, you will receive a 50 point penalty at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the week. So this is a serious thing, guys. We want you to be aware. You can leave if you want to. You don't have to leave. Mm -hmm. There will be lunch for those that don't wanna leave. You do not have to leave. But if you choose to leave and you come back late, um, there will be a ramification behind that. If you are more than 20 minutes late, Guess what, guys? We're going to have to disqualify you. you will I be, mean, yeah, yes. That's what the, the ramification is going to be. So we want you to leave if you feel like you need to. If you if we, we don't want to restrict you. Uh, we want to give you that freedom. But along with that freedom comes some responsibility. So we want you to be aware of that. Um, along with that, food and beverages, like yep. Steph said. Outside of water bottles, um, refreshments to drink uh, will be OK. And items needed for medical uh, purposes will be allowed. Um, but outside food and beverage outside of that will not be allowed in the event space. We want to make sure we keep it clean and tidy and that we're not having any kind of spills or excess trash in the area uh, while, while, we're, while the um, teams are participating uh, and whilst, while the participants are working with the robots. Okay, so I think that's not said about that. Mm -hmm. Debrief. So again, this is something that we, we feel real strongly about this year. We think especially because <laughs> The changes that we made, it's going to be very important to get feedback mm -hmm. uh, on how well you feel like those changes have been uh, implemented and whether they were positive or negative. So we want you to think about that ahead of time. Uh, you will have all probably gone through a state event and you will have experienced part or uh, some of the rules. Um, so we want you to come prepared uh, as mm -hmm. part of the last part of the last day to um, 
have a debrief session. And if you've got constructive uh, criticism or feedback, we want to hear it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, uh, we hope that it's constructive uh, or that you can, you can uh, phrase it in a constructive way. We don't want to be mean anywhere. Uh, we don't want people to be mean to us. We don't want to be mean to anybody. So um, if you have feedback, we want to hear it, but sure. just not be now uh, based on those expectations about being kind and stuff, yes. couch it in a quiet, uh, kind way. Yes. So now's the time. I'll, uh, if anyone has any questions, please feel free uh, to uh, uh, put those up. And Heather, if, if you're watching, if there's any questions, do we have anything? Um, so the first question is, um, where can the guide be found on the on the website? So if you go to www.pitsco.com, in uh, when the website comes up, there will be a search field in the upper right corner. It's going to be USAR. And if you just type in USAR and uh, hit the magnifying glass so it searches, you will have several product options that come up. Um, the first one will be an RC set. Um, the second one will be a programmable set. Uh, Click on either one of those sets. It will take you to a product page. Uh, at the, if you scroll down on the product page, there will be a list of resources. And I believe it's the second one from mm -hmm. the left mm -hmm. should be uh, the two set 2023 challenge guide mm -hmm. uh, in a PDF format. You can also find that, by the way, if you go to the skills website, it's a little bit harder to find because you have to drill through all of the different challenges that are at the skills website, but it's also posted there. Okay, uh, the next question is, can the camera be powered by the 12 volt main battery? You can. If you all, if you want to put everything on uh, the single battery source, which is the way I have my robot set up, you're welcome to do that. Uh, if your camera is equipped with that or equipped to be able to do that, that is perfectly legal. Okay, and um, what about voltage regulators? Uh, a voltage regulator would be allowed uh, in order to, to uh, make sure there's no power spikes from the battery, anything like that. We just don't want extra battery capacitors. In other words, uh, single battery source, uh, not exceeding the manufacturing specs, 12.8. That should cover both manufacturers. We know that uh, a fully charged battery is probably going to spike above 12.8. But that 12.8 is the manufacturing spec, and that's what we're going to go by. So as long as it stays within that, um, then it is a legal battery. Uh, and if you want to put a voltage regulator on it, that is perfectly fine because that's not an external power source. That just regulates the power that you have. Okay. Um, the next question is, um, is this information for the national event only? As far as what we've presented today, this is the focus of the national event. Um, states have the flexibility to facilitate the competition however they see fit based off of their timelines. Um, but these will kind of be, these will be like the, the guidelines, the rules and the regulations for the national level. So if you come to the national event, this is what you can expect to see and expect to experience. Yeah, and states have the choice of how they uh, represent this and implement this at their uh, state competitions. Okay. Um, the next question is, um, will the recording for this webinar be available? Yes, we will send it out to everyone that registered. We're also going to pass it along to skills uh, so that they can post it however they want. They can share it in their newsletter. Um, and then Heather, I'm assuming we will have this posted potentially somewhere uh, on our YouTube page um, or somewhere that's accessible um, from the Pitsco site as well. Yes, that's right. Um, can you repeat where the ordinance will be located? There will be for the main field challenge, there will be a one um, location that will be um, localized that we will tell. In other words, at the beginning during the orientation, when we walk everyone through the, the, the main challenge, and we will repeat this on the, the third day when we do before we do the challenge, but we will say in the main plexiglass structure, the ordinance will, there will be one ordinance within that structure. We won't say exactly where it will be within that structure, but that will narrow down where they have to look for that first ordinance. 
The other two ordinances or the other ordinance, because there's be two that they will uh, be responsible to find, will be um, not in that main house, but there will be probably a couple of locations again. So they don't have to search all of the fields. Um, again, you will probably see this when you when you get there, but because the the challenge is we're actually going to put two of the mailboxes that have been freestanding. They will be a part of the structure, um, the satellite structure. So um, there, that will narrow down that the, the or uh, make sure that those mailboxes are in a single place for them to look each time. And then there will be one floating mailbox. But that second ordinance could be in multiple locations, but they will know for sure where that first ordinance is. Okay. Um, the next question is that um, the sample event that's listed uh, or the sample event agenda that's listed in the um, document shows one day, but this is the national event is three days. Is that right? That is right. Again, that's because of the difference between what's a, uh, a state level event might uh, have the resources to do versus what we have the resources to do at the national event. Um, we will, there will be uh, seven, uh, at least seven different folks from Pitsco there to help manage the event. A lot of states don't have that many people. Um, a lot of states don't have three days. Um, they only have a single day to do that, to be able to cram all of that in. So that's why they need to be able to adjust this challenge for their uh, specific uh, uh, resources. So um, that's why the, the sample event that we have posted in the guide is different from what we've just uh, specified. Okay. And um, similar question, just to confirm, the state event is one day? Some state, it depends on, every state is different. So depending on the, the re, again, going back to the resources and the time available, um, most states we see are a one day event for the U USAR. Um, some states have two days, but they may be running multiple competitions throughout those two days. Um, but the most common number of days is, and so, um, what we've heard from some states is that they may not do all of the skill challenges. They may just do two of the skill challenges just to give the participants a flavor of what a skill challenge might be, but they won't try to do all five of them uh, in a day. They may do one or two and then the main challenge as well. So for the state events, that might, that, again, that there might be a, a different scenario that they see. Okay, um, the next question is uh, for the communication challenge, um, is uh, English required or can other languages be used? Sure, no, if, if the driver and, and uh, spotter are, are comfortable in Spanish or uh, whatever language that they, they are comfortable with, uh, if they wanna communicate with that, that's fine. Absolutely. This is a test of how they communicate. So um, it doesn't necessarily have to be in English at all. No. Okay. Um, next question, are resumes to be submitted seven days before or on the day of the event? For our competition, we require that at the day of the event, when we go, whether they've, they've submitted it digitally or if they're bringing it physically, that it is there the day when we collect it. So they have an option. Mm -hmm. They could re re submit it yeah. earlier if they want to digitally, um, but uh, there is not a time limit. Uh, as far as how early they have to be, as long as it's there it's by that. There. that when when the they come day. back to turn in their engineering notebooks and their resume, they, ha they have had to either submitted it digitally that we can verify or have a physical resume to turn in. But it has to be at that designated time. Okay. Um, next question. Uh, will there be translators at the event? Ooh. Um, uh, if, hmm. I, we can't promise that because we don't know exactly uh, language. I do think we are uh, expecting some help that somebody that would be Spanish speaking mm -hmm. uh, so that we might have some help with that. But I can't promise that. I mean, at this point, we're planning on at least having a Spanish, um, someone that's comfortable in Spanish. Um, but outside of that, I can't um, make any promises. Um, can weight be added to the robot to stabilize it? Yes, at this point, there is not a weight limit on the robots. There is a size constraint. Obviously, they cannot exceed the size constraint of 18 by 18 by 18. It has to fit in that, that cubic volume. Um, but as far as weight 
we do not have a weight restriction. So if they want to add weight for stable uh, stabilization, that's perfectly fine. Okay, that's all the questions. Well, gosh, guys, thank you yeah, so much for uh, for the questions. And obviously, you were listening and um, and wanted to know some of these things. So we appreciate that so much. We are excited about this yeah. event. We hope that you are excited about the event. And it's going to be here. Are excited about the, the students event. are going to be excited about the event. And it's going to be here before we know it. So uh, we hopefully will see you in Hot Atlanta, Atlanta in June. Yes. Do and we have a date? Exact date? Uh, I can't remember the exact date. It's June. We know it's in June. We know it's in Atlanta. So we will be there. Yeah. And so hopefully you will too. Uh, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. We're always happy to answer and provide any kind of clarifying information. We want to make sure that it's as, as fair and fun as possible um, and that all of the work and time and dedication that the participants have put in really gets to shine um, and, and that they have fun and enjoy it. We can say uh, just real briefly that we have heard uh, some folks that have already uh, done sample events in their individual states and so far the feedback has been positive mm -hmm. so we were encouraged by that so hopefully we feel like we're moving in the right way so absolutely thanks again yeah thanks have a great day.